In 2010, Bob Jones recorded uh, a message he called the perfect storm. In the early 1990s, the Lord revealed to him that there was a, a great storm, a huge storm that was coming to the United States. And he said there were seven storms that were forming and coming to a culmination that would form this perfect storm. And the seven uh, features of that storm are uh, governmental, spiritual, financial, social, emotional, infirmity, and geophysical. So in this message, Bob gives an awesome insight and understanding to how these storms began and instructions on what to do in the midst of the perfect storm, which I believe America and the whole world is currently experiencing. So you will be blessed in the hearing of this message, and I'll return after Bob's message for a recap. So be blessed in the hearing. The 107th Psalm in the second verse. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I be the redeemed are being given new authority, or woke, being woke up to it. And we're going to really need to take that authority that God has given us now uh, in these times of storms. In the 90s, in Panama City, Florida, I went into a place that I go where I've shown things. I believe it to be a trance. And I see things that I, I reveal it to people and then they happen. So in the, in the 90s, I had a vision of a, a huge storm coming at the United States. It was a, one of the biggest that we've ever seen. And it had uh, many different facets to it. And I was told that this great storm would come when Admiral Oral Roberts went home. Uh, Oral Roberts went home on December the 15th of uh, uh, 09. That was the fifth day of Hanukkah. I don't believe that was any accident. For Hanukkah is the Feast of Life and the Feast of Dedication. And I believe it's the time that the redeemed of the Lord begin to shine like never before. And that we really need to begin to dedicate our lives to his purpose and plans. So I've uh, spoke this prophecy many times in the past. But now this, these storms are seven different storms coming together to make a perfect storm. And the first one of these storms that's coming together is governmental. You're going to see a shaking in the government like you've never seen before. There's going to be a shaking in the church government like you've never seen before. And in it, you'll begin to see the true government of the church raise up. That has the authority of let the redeemed of the Lord say so. But it's more than just the church leaders. It is the church itself. Those that's been redeemed, taking a say over what's going on down here. I have in my past seen a tornado. I was in a church where it was coming right at us. We took authority of it. It lifted and went over us, but it, uh, a few miles on down the road, it fell uh in an area in Kansas City called Ruskin Heights, and there was great damage done by it. So we really need to get a vision of, of using this authority, not only for our own protection, but for protection of an entire city. Because uh, we were a beginning of, of faith then, but I think the faith now we're talking about is let the redeemed of the Lord say so that it can turn an entire storm away from cities away from uh, states, away from nations. Uh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. In 2003, there was great influenza in the United States. 
and in Canada. And I was in a Morningstar conference on a New Year's Eve of that year. And I went into all these places I go, which I believe was a trance, and I saw the Lord. And he was very angry at the leaders, the full-time ministries in North and South Carolina, for they were all crying out to him to pull back this influenza. And this influenza was killing babies, and it was the Lord's baby, so it was being killed. He was killing uh, uh, church leaders. And the Lord was angry because the church was not taking the authority that he had given them. And he told me, they want me to pull it back, I can't. Because I've given them authority to. You go down there and you rebuke them. And tell them to repent by not taking that authority. And tell them to get up and take the authority of what I've already given them. So I brought that word at around noon, New Year's Eve of 03. Uh, there were many uh, full-time leaders there, but the whole church got up and repented of not taking authority. And then we pointed our fingers at this influence and we said, we curse you in Jesus' name. We command that you cease to function and die immediately. Well, that morning, all I heard in the television was influenza is not peaked. The hospital wards are full. The hallways are full. And it's yet getting worse in the United States and Canada. From that time forth, I never heard of another case of influenza. Also, I didn't hear of another case of influenza in Canada. So... The redeemed of the Lord have got to begin to say so. Because if you don't say so, things are going to happen. Uh, do you have authority over storms? Jesus, everything that he did, you have the same authority to do. And when he was asleep on the ship, and this great storm coming to sea, and they woke him up, he sort of put out with them. I believe he was put out with them because they didn't take the authority. So he pointed his finger at his disciples and said, Peace. Then he pointed his finger to that star and said, Be still. It ceased immediately. So I think what he's speaking to the church is peace. Be at peace. And take authority over these storms that are beginning to come in so many different ways. So... Admiral Oral Roberts is going home. He was a leader of many leaderships. Now, when a storm comes at sea, uh, the ships don't come into port. They go out to sea, and they let their anchor down. And when the storms come, the wave just simply lifts that ship up higher than it's ever been before. And then it uh, uh, it comes back down. I believe the church is getting ready for higher experiences than ever known before. And when it comes back down, I think it's going to be to uh, get the drowning people, to take them aboard ship. I think it's going to be one of the church's finest hour. Now, this anchor is the anchor of hope. In Hebrews 6.19. And hope means confident expectation in the Lord. It's time that we begin to have a confident expectation in Him. And that we have that blessed hope to get us through the times that's at hand. Another thing, if a ship is in a storm at sea and has no lighthouse, it has no light in it, then the waves are going to take it up and they're going to run aground on the rocks. So it's time that the church gets light in it. For the church is a lighthouse to the world. And it's time that the church turns their light on. For they are light in Ephesians 5. You're light. And it's time in this time of darkness you turn that light on. For there will be no darkness where there's light. 
So it is a time uh, of the storms. But we need to be prepared to take them head on. For when a, a ship goes out and lets its anchor down, it puts its face right into the storm. And the church is not going under, it's going through the storm. Not only when it's going through it, it's its finest hour of, of bringing the souls in. So it's no time for the church to have fear whatsoever. It's a time for them to uh, uh, begin to rejoice because there's going to be souls come in like they've never seen before. Now you can have your anchor uh, uh, let out at sea. You can have that hope, that confident expectation. You can have a lighthouse. But if you get crossways with your brothers and sisters, then that ship will be crossways. And that wave will take it under. It's no time for us to get crossways with one another. It's time for us to get behind one another like we never have before. It's the time that we begin to protect one another from our back like never before. And it's time that we begin to resolve our differences and forgive and let the light within us shine so those that's in darkness uh, may find a salvation. So this uh, is at hand now. So I believe that there's seven different storms that's coming together. And as I said, the first one is political. And I believe you're going to see a governmental shaking like we haven't seen before. It's already going on. And government hasn't got the answers. The redeemed of the Lord's got the answers. The government's not got the answers on the economy, on the finance or anything like that. The redeemed of the Lord's got the answers. They're the ones that say it. If they don't say, then the enemy's going to have his way. But if they do say, then the enemy's not going to have his way. The Lord, by his spirit's going to have his way. So, the first one, political, governmental. I believe the Lord is getting ready to restore the true apostolic leadership to the church. I believe in this shaking in our government will bring a fourth, uh, 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 will bring the Lord back into the equation of the United States where people begin to uh, uh, focus on what we were. We were... We were born on the freedom of religion. I believe you're getting ready to see religion come to a new liberty and a new freedom like we've never seen before. And I, I believe that we're getting ready to see the apostolic leadership of the church take a strong leadership in, in the nation of America and the world. I don't believe in what I'm speaking now is just the United States. I believe it's the entire world. And we're getting ready to see uh, uh, leaders of the church raise up and have the say so. Now, the second a storm will be uh, spiritual. I mean, in the United States, I believe that they're going to the witch doctors, fortune tellers, tarot cards, everything they can to the occult to find out the truth. And I think they're looking in the wrong places. Because when you go to these places and you seek that, it's a curse that comes over you. And there's no light within you. If you have no light and you're going to the dark side, then the time that's coming is going to be uh, really horrible for you. For You're going to be a place that has no hope in it, no confident expectations, no absolutes in it you're going to begin to come to wonder why you were ever born. So, in this time of this spiritual shakening, the real spiritual people of the redeemed will have the same. And what they say will begin to happen. Uh, I believe you'll begin to hear prophets prophesy things that's going to happen in the future uh, long before it happens. I believe you're going to begin to see the spiritual people begin to bring understanding by revelation like we've never known before. So I believe we're in a time of great understanding and great opportunity. I see the real uh, uh, prophets coming forth. 
And there'll be uh, uh, prophets that are, are spiritual. Therefore, you'll begin to hear one bring the same word. If you go to California the next day, you get out there and you hear the same word being spoken because it's one spirit. I don't believe it will ever come together in our mind, but in our conscious and our spirit, when the Holy Spirit speaks into it, we'll have a unity. And where there's a unity, where there's one or two or three, there the Lord will be in their midst. And I believe it'll be the, the revelation of the Holy Spirit that's revealed in our conscious, our spirit man. And when we hear that, we'll have the authority to take it. So I believe you're getting ready for spiritual authority on a level that's uh, uh, unimaginable. I believe that we're in a time of change like the church has never known before. I believe that we're uh, sailing in unknown waters that's never been charted before. And that none of us know what's really going to take place. Because he hadn't revealed it before. And really, I think one of the reasons he hadn't revealed it because we don't have anything in our past to relate to it. It's going to be totally new. And it's going to be the, the, the children of light are really shining to give the children of darkness an opportunity to come to the light. So we're in a time of spiritual shakening. But those who have the word of God in them uh, are, are unshakable because their entire uh, salvation is based on faith and that they are light. And they'll go through the darkness. They'll just simply face it and go through it. They'll not go under. Now the third great storm, I believe it's financial. And I think, I don't, I think you're going to see the financial shaking in the world that started to continue. And I think in this time of shaking, you're going to begin to find out that there are those whom the Lord guides in a way to where that uh, they prosper in a time of shaking. Uh, they're going to need to. it. I see in a time of financial, I see evangelists raising up on scales that we've never known before. And to where they bring words of salvation to where as many as 10, 20,000 get saved in one conference. I believe you're going to begin to see the Lord's Woodstocks to where a quarter of a million youth get saved. I believe we're getting ready for some of the greatest salvation that's ever been revealed on the earth. I believe we're getting ready for the beginning of an end time harvest that'll have no end. To where uh, the first of it will bring in at least a billion youth uh, altogether. So this evangelist, when they come in, I believe they're going to be going to people that uh, can't figure it out, especially some of the very best, some of the wealthiest. And so I see like some of the wealthiest losing uh, uh, half of their wealth and not knowing what to do. These evangelists will lead them to the Lord. And I believe at this time, there'll be a greater wealth come into the church than it ever has been before. For I'll tell you, the devil has no problem in supporting his kingdom. Now get ready for the Lord to support his in a time of shaking. Get ready for the true evangelist to raise up a, uh, a worldwide. So this uh, uh, third shaking, it's going to be something to see. That's what we waited for. So don't be afraid of these shakings. Rejoice in it. For it's a time that we have the same. Uh, I believe the fourth great storm is social. I don't think the church has been socialized with one another very much. I think we've had too much hierarchy and not enough uh, 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 relationship with one another. I believe we're getting ready to have a relationship with one another that didn't have a Nicolaitan spirit in it, which means conquer the laity. I believe we're getting ready for the body of Christ to come together in unity as one body. And each person finding his place in it, and each person is important as another one. It'll take all of us to go through what is at hand. But we need to really get a vision for being social with one another. For 
uh, as you are social with one another. I believe that preparation will begin to take place with us. I believe one of the strongest anointings right now is getting ready is home meetings. And I believe here's where the preparation for the great harvest is taking place at home meetings. And home meetings will come into the church at different times, but the home meetings really is where you're getting going to begin to get equipped for the harvest. And one of the things I see is the home meetings. Some of the people in the home meetings are like, let's say all the people in the home meetings are barns to where you can bring the harvest into. Some of them that's new in, in, in home meetings, I believe, can, can bring in 10 people into their barn, which is them. There'll be others in home meetings that can handle 50 people. There'll be others that can handle 100 and there's leaders that will be able to handle a thousand. And when you've got these kind of barns, you're getting ready for harvest. I believe this is a main purpose right now is focusing on building barns, not to build houses, <clears throat> or, but to build barns. Because if you have a great harvest and you have no barn to bring it into, it'll be lost. So we're going to have the harvest. But we need to begin to get to be equipped for handling the number that will come. Some of the greatest churches that we have now. Can you handle a, a thousand converts this week? Or 10,000? Or 50,000? I don't believe we can. I believe now must begin that every one of us get a vision that we are a barn and begin to build ourselves up in the Holy Spirit to where we can uh, bring into that harvest which is ready to come. I believe the Lord is ready. I don't believe we are. So if we are going to get ready, then we're going to have to be social with one another. We're going to have to be on the same level with one another. And each one of us in our place uh, of reaping, so, the fifth storm, I think it's going to be a very dangerous storm. It's going to be emotional. I mean, people are going to lose it. Uh, they've invested their lives in uh, uh, retirement, uh, in education, and laid their money back for the future. I think... Emotions are getting ready to go bananas. I think that some of you psychiatrists are going to need a Christian to deliver them. I think they go. I think these people that's really emotional that's losing, they're going to need the the members of the church to give them a pill. It's called a gospel. And that pill they'll give them will bring them into a place of peace, which will calm their emotions. This is what the uh, the barns are for. To calm people's emotions, to take authority of them, to show them hope in a time of, of great disaster. To focus them on the light and to focus them on the true absolute, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. So, the church has no right to losing, uh, letting their emotions get out of control. For they are the ones that's called to help others get them back under control. The sixth perfect storm I see is uh, infirmity. And like I've already said, uh, the newscasters are scaring people like never before. And I don't believe that the infections and the flus and everything else that's out there now has been any worse than I've ever known them. I've seen really bad seasons when they were bad and before. Only we wouldn't, we wouldn't terrorize by them. We lived through them. We went through them. But there's a fear that's being put out there by, uh, uh, by some of the newscasters. I think they're really a new terrorist. But now they're not giving any Hope they're giving you fear. 
These things are frightening you to turn that television off, that radio off. Put that paper down and go to him who can give you peace. So, uh, infirmity? Yeah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If they say no, then it's going to be no. The world don't have the say. Neither does the devil. Neither does his people. But the saints have the say. And it's time they begin to, to come together and say, there'll be no influenza. There'll be no pestilence. And the same thing, I believe there's a, a fungus and blight and a tacting of our crops. I believe this is just what happened in Florida recently with the freeze. It uh, literally wiped out a lot of the orange groves and strawberry. These were people that had invested their life in this work. I believe the church, if we'd have come together, could have said no to that freeze. And that we need to begin to take authority over the weather. And I know this is contrary to a lot of people's thinking, but boy, the Lord did. And I've seen the saints take authority over the weather. I've seen them uh, 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 in droughts, pray, and the rains came. We have to say, we have so much authority that you've never used before. You've never been this way before. And because you haven't, it's no way to be frightened. But as we go this way, we need to chart these unknown waters so others can follow us. So there are going to be churches that take the authority and they'll chart it to where it, it'll go worldwide. Whatever they're going to do is going to go worldwide. We don't know what we can do until we get off of our seats and say so. Uh, this the seventh great storm. It's your physical. There is a natural order of things on the earth. And earthquakes, volcanoes, tidal waves, all of these are some of the natural order. I don't believe that we can stop it because it's a natural thing. Faith will never raise above the will of God. But I'll say this much for it. I believe we can take the death out of it. I believe that the amount of death is the amount of intercession that are listening. There are these uh, uh, earthquakes that's already coming, like in Haiti, in uh, California, in so many other places, uh, especially in uh, the New Madrid Fault uh, in, in the middle of the United States. There's shaking that's going in all of these. But we ought to begin to take the authority. I believe that we can take authority to where there'll be less death. That uh, only those that don't listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying will be in harm's way. But I believe we can also take authority to where instead of there one huge quake that destroys everything, will there be uh, where just to uh, uh, keep going smaller quakes at a time until it settles. But to place our change it, it's a, a time that I don't believe that we can stop it. But it is time that we can know about it. It's time that the, the revelation gifts, the, the spiritual gifts will reveal when it's going to happen. For see, if it's revealed when it's going to happen, and I've seen that many, many times, I've saw uh, exact dates prophesied when earthquakes are going to happen. And if it, if these, if the Lord releases this revelation to His prophets, then those that don't believe it, it can stay. But those that do believe it can flee and be safe in these times. And I believe it's really important that the church has the revelation of where to be and when to be there. But they're going to happen, the quakes. Uh, the volcano is going to happen. Uh, the tidal waves are going to happen. We have some authority in that, but this is a natural process in the earth that we can't stop. But we can stop the death. I believe that some of the danger in these volcanoes erupted 
it will put so much ash in the air that we probably won't have any summer. And this has happened in the past. Therefore, we need the wisdom to lay up uh, when the right time is. The Lord recently spoke to me this word. Observe the ants. For they harvest in a time of summer when you can harvest. They lay up. I think it's time that we really begin to get a vision of what to lay up. For there's going to be shaking in our storms. Uh, also, I believe that uh, there are fungus and blights in the sixth judgment that will attack corn and wheat. There are things that we can pray about this. There's things that we can do about it. I think we're going to need to go back to the old wheat. I think we uh, uh, change the genetics of our food supply to where we're going to need to go back to the original. It may not be as big a harvest, and it may not be uh, what we're used to, but I think it'll be what is adequate for us. I don't believe the United States is going to go through a time of, uh, of starvation, but a time that we need to pray, and we need to pray that our scientists find new solutions to where the one blight can wipe out all your corn crop just like that. Because uh, your your corn and your wheat, all this is lost its immunity because they've changed the genetics of it so much. And I believe it's time that we ought to get back to the original and also get back to the original God. We've got too many gods. There's only one that is really our God. We get back to him and let him begin to give us a wisdom. A financial it's a time that Christian science break through. There are Christians out there that's working on uh, uh, things that I believe are getting ready to break through. It'll bring the wealth of the world in. Uh, there are people that's working on coal fusion, which is simply water but divided oxygen from hydrogen, which will be some of the greatest uh, energy you've ever seen. It's unpolluted. I believe we're on the verge of that. And I believe the Christians are the ones that's going to invent it. And it'll make energy so cheap that, uh, you'll, uh, that you can, the whole world will have the, the energy it needs, the light. We need these scientists to break through. I think it's time that we really begin to pray for those that are saved, that they break through in that realm. I believe there's scientists, there's, uh, uh, people that are saved that are working on uh, cancer cures. I look for that to happen. When this happens, then the wealth of the wicked will come to the righteous worldwide. It's a time that we really ought to begin by faith to have that great expectation that God is with us and he's going to give his mind on certain matters and new inventions and new understandings of health like we've never known before a uh, uh, new understanding of how to break the curse off of men I believe that we're in a time that the Lord broke the curse of the law off of us but we still have a curse on this called the curse of the fall. I think we're in a time that we ought to get a vision of breaking the curse of the fall to where you don't die of old age, where you don't even age, where uh, none of the things you have wear out, where you have the answer, and you are the answer down here. The light, the people of light are the answer. It's not the people of darkness. It's the people of light. And it's time that you people of light let the redeemed of the Lord say so. They're the one that's got the authority. So we're in a time of great change. We're in a time of of, of Jeremiah 33.3. 3. We've never been this way before. 
we have no idea. If the Lord told us, we wouldn't have any idea what he's talking about. We're in the time of uh, Isaiah 48, 6 and 7. It is a, we're in a time that, uh, that the spirit of prophecy shall bring this in. And the spirit of prophecy is a testimony of Jesus Christ, what he's doing in our lives. I think we're getting ready for the children of light to have testimonies like never before. Because I think you're going to begin to have to say so. And testimonies of what God has done for your life, what he's done for your family, what he's done for your city, what he's done for your state, what he's done for your nation, what he's done for the nations. For I see in this time of shaking, uh, entire families come together in the unity. Entire cities come together in the unity and being dedicated to the Lord. Entire states come together and being dedicated to the Lord. Nations coming together and being dedicated to the Lord. Entire nations. So we're in a time of this. So we're in an exciting time. Uh, in August of 08, I had a vision that I believe is, which I believe is trance. I saw that three uh, elders of God were going to stand before the Father and give an account for what was happening in the body of Christ on the earth. And these were three uh, men that were greatly honored in heaven. Uh, the scripture on this is Hebrews uh, 13, 17. The elders give a report. These elders are going to give a report in heaven of what was wrong on the earth. The first man I saw was Jerry Falwell. And he would give a, a report on the earth why there were no morals in the church anymore. I believe, church, you're getting ready for a godly sorrow like you've never seen before. To bring back in morals again. To bring back in honor. To bring back into that place where you give your word. It's a blank check. You can cash it. And I believe that we're getting ready for this godly sorrow to come to such a place where God grants us repentance. Second uh, Timothy uh, 2, 24 and 25. If God grants you repentance, then it'll be as if you had never sinned. And any curse that come because of your sin will be broken. There are curses and bloodlines and everything else. Uh, we're talking about new bloodlines we're talking about his bloodline. We've never been this way before. So there's not any way of explaining it. But we're in a new time. And so this new time began with Jerry Falwell when he went home. The second elder I saw was Oral Roberts. And Oral Roberts is a Supernatural faith man. When he stands before the Father, which he has recently, he'll give this report. Why there's not any faith in the church. And if there's no faith, it's because there's no faithfulness. So you can get ready for a shake in there, to where faithfulness come back into the church again, where we're faithful to one another and we're faithful to God. And where you begin to see uh, uh Supernatural faith works off of true uh, liquid love. I think you're getting ready to see liquid love come into the body where supernatural faith comes. And we always expect it to be some guy out in front. It may be the least one that's just come in that had that supernatural faith of creating miracles. So we need everybody in their place. We need to quit pushing back those that just got saved. We need to quit pushing back those that we don't esteem very much. We esteem lightly. We need to begin to esteem one another as equals. So I think we're in a time of, of you'd be surprised who has a supernatural faith. I know that when I got saved, 
I got so turned on that I wasn't afraid to do anything or say anything. We need to get saved again. And I believe that that's one of the things that's going to happen now. I believe the so-called church is getting ready to get saved. And I believe the redeemed of the Lord will say so. So, it's, it's a time like it's never been before. There was a third man there. Pray for Billy Graham that he stays longer. Because we're not ready for that great harvest that will come when he gives his report. We need the barns. We need time for these home meetings to get barns put together. We need barns built. I'm afraid the church is not ready for a million people saved every day. And it's going to happen. We need to get these barns ready and we need to bring them into a central barn or shipping place that you know is a church now. We need to be part of that, but we also need to be part of the barn building and each individual. When Billy Graham goes home, he'll give a report why there's no evangelism, no power evangelism. For these three elders, they are, were greatly honored in heaven. And when they speak into the heart of the Father, he is going to release things to change it in the beloved. Can you imagine 300 milligrams moving in supernatural power with a quarter of a million youth? Can you imagine 300 old robbers, Gideon 300, moving in creative miracles, arms and legs, organs? with a quarter of a million youth? Can you imagine Jerry Falwell, 300 of these men that come to such a level of righteousness and holiness that they would shine like light who we'll all see them. The entire world is focused on these that are Entertainers and things like that, these are dark people. They bring death. What if you had 300 cherry foil that was nothing but light? They were focusing on the light of God and shine through them. Morals, power, evangelism. I saw that when this happened, I saw a man that represents many. He was 25 years old. He had been saved six months. He was speaking and thousands of youth was coming to the Lord. We're not ready for it yet. I mean, we're getting ready for the youth to be released to the youth. These youth that's going to come, they're going to come out of the sewers. And they're going to cry up until they're totally clean and pure. And they're going to go forth cleaning others. Those that's been believing. And those that have compassion, they'll come with supernatural faith out of them. To where you see creative miracles coming. I mean, consistent. Not sporadic as has happened, but consistent. Healing's consistent. Uh, deliverances from infirmity and plagues and all type of viruses and everything else. Consistent. 
I believe we're in a time of the absolute revealing himself and him being revealed in us. So we need to be ready because the harvest is coming. It's coming on a level that we've never known before. And the next uh, uh, two and three years is really critical to build these barns where we got time. We need to get a vision of what it's really going to be to our uh, uh, individual may lead as many as a, a thousand people a week to the Lord on the streets. That one-to-one -one witness is coming like we've never seen before. So, it's a time that we let the redeemed of the Lord say so. One other thing I want to share with you. I've shared it many times. It's a hundred year prophecy. And we're at a key point in it. The 1950s revealed the, the power of God. William Brenham, Oral Roberts, A. E. Allen, uh, these mighty men of God doing Awesome stuff. The 1960s revealed the Spirit of God when the Holy Spirit began to invade the denomination churches. The 1970s began to reveal the, the Word of God. That's when the great teachers began to uh, ground what had already taken place. The 1980s revealed the Spirit of God. That's when real prophets began to raise up. The 1990s revealed the revelation that there should be a godly government, uh, apostolic. Uh, the 2000 was the beginning. We begin to get a vision of the glory of God. And we begin to see the glory of God in different times. But now the 2010 is to not have faith in God, but to have the faith of God. And with the faith of God, we're going to really need to have a a clean conscious, spirit man, moral. We're going to need to have the, the compassion, the power of evangelism, and that love for souls in our, our conscious, our spirit man. So what is the, the, the faith of God is what's in the Father's heart. And where the conscience is pure, the Holy Spirit will reveal to your conscience, your spirit man, what's in the heart of the Father. And when this happens, in your spirit man, your mind will be the catalyst. For your mind will do the proclamation of it. Your mind will speak its creative stuff. Your mind will give the Father permission to do these things. And by that I mean the Father has given you all authority. 115 Psalm 16 verse. The heavens belong to God, but He's given the earth into the hands of man. When you're doing this and you're speaking what's in the Father's heart, you're giving Him permission to do His will on the earth. So, that's what the faith of God is. It's the sword of the Spirit. It's the keys of the kingdom. It's simply what's in the Father's heart. Uh, and when you get this, uh, Matthew 16, 19, you can bind what the Father's bound in His heart. I mean, you can close up the second heaven. You can shut up the doors of hell. And you can loose. You can loose the, 
the heavenly blessings. You can loose the kingdom of God within. A, a, a love and a power like you've never seen before. And literally in agreement and in harmony with the heart of the Father. It begins now. 2020, because of the faith of God will bring the church, the true church, into a place of resting in God. Where God literally rests in you. I think everything that's going on now is preparing for a place for Papa to move in with you. Ephesians 2, 2, 2. Where you cohabitate with the Father and the Spirit. That the Father rests in you. And you rest in Him. 2030. Uh, I believe will be the family of God. To where you don't see all so many differences. But you see one huge family. Uh, 2040. I believe will reveal the kingdom of God. The kingdom of authority on the earth. Some of the churches got a vision of leaving here shortly. I think you ought to get a long-range vision of staying here permanently. And uh, the coming forth of the kingdom of God. 2050, the sons and daughters of God, those that's matured into the likeness of Christ, that's walking over all the earth, It'll be one of the devil's worst hours. But I believe his worst hour has begun. And the faith of God will begin this year. It will literally be like an antidote to anything that snake bites. I think it's time we're going to see our sisters have sore heels for stomping the head. So it's a different time than we've ever known before. So do not let fear and do not let trouble distract you. For this is your finest hour, saints. Raise up to the occasion. Put your face into the wind and go through it. Amen. Well, that was an awesome message from Bob Jones, and I would suggest that you listen to it over again and take notes. Um, as you heard Bob say many times in this recording, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So it's time that Christians do just that. We need to take our rightful place and decree the word of the Lord. And we've been given all authority, and it's time that we exercise it. Back in uh, March of 2018, the Lord told me that Pandora's box was going to be opened. And I wrote about it in the 2019 Shepherd's Rod. According to Greek mythology, Pandora opened a jar containing sickness, death, and many other unspecified evils, which were then released into the world. Though she hastened to close the container, only one thing was left behind and it's been translated as hope. So I believe that box has been opened and the seven storms have culminated into the perfect storm that Bob saw back in the early 1990s. As we are currently facing a worldwide pandemic, believers must not lose their anchor of hope. We must be the children of life and demonstrate the faith of God, not fear. As Bob said, the, the newscasters are the terrorists. And if you listen to or watch TV, I mean, for the most part, that's what they're, they're saying is more fear driven than it is faith. Uh, and as Bob said, don't let fear and trouble distract you. So this is the church's finest hour. Lift up your faith and go through it. Let your life be a witness to others, for out of this darkness great light shall come, and the glory of the Lord rest upon his children. For after these great storms settle, 
the field is ripe for harvesting. And if you follow any of the other uh, great movements of God, there was always a darkness before the light. So get ready because the great harvest, that billion soul harvest that Bob prophesied and waited for, it is now right at hand. And he's talked about building the barns. Our barns, our barns, we are those barns and we must be ready for the harvest is right at hand. So be blessed and fear not, stand in faith in Jesus' name.